may need a minute. I have a fucking headache. I'm taking my Motrin. I have such a fucking headache. So, me and Miles went to see Transformers Bark at the Moon. That's all I could ever see when I saw that fucking title was Bark at the Moon. I'd rather watch fucking... Anyway, we went to different showings, actually. He went with his friends, and I went alone. Because I have no friends. Anyway. I took a notepad. <laughs> Every time something irritated me, I made a note. I started taking notes before the movie began. I started tweeting before the movie began. Packed. Packed theater, you? Yep. Packed? Oh. Okay. Where'd you go? You went to the... You went to one on power. Harkins, yeah. Okay, Harkins. Okay, yeah, I went to I went to the IMAX. I did not see it in 3D. Neither did I. Fuck that. Fuck that. Like I okay seriously like we what, didn't want to spend the money. And, well, no, script, no, not money. Not just our, I and my friends didn't want to spend the money. Neither that. Thought plus it is it's a two hour and forty minute movie. Mmm. Mmm. Longest one yet. By about 20 minutes? 15, 20? Well, see, the thing is, I know I keep going on about this, the 3D. I, I hate 3D, but I have a physical reason for hating 3D. I get headaches. I got a headache now, and I get, like, a drop of the hat. My eyes just can't deal with the 3D. But even if they could, I don't think I could take two, two hours and 40 minutes of that shit. I, I really don't. It, it would strain on me. That's why... That's why I didn't choose it. This crowd was pumped. Oh yeah, my, my crowd was pumped. They were, they were so excited. There was applause before the movie started. There was applause between previews because they were anticipating the movie coming up. The, uh, the couple sitting to my right, uh, were so excited. Like they were literally like, no, I'm serious. Like, like. Fists in the air, like squeeing. They were squeeing. He's my god. Like no, I was I was about to like write something like there's a lot of embarrassed girlfriends here, and there were a few, but no, these cu- this couple was fucking psyched. They were. Uh, she actually the the girl who was sitting next to me, very nearly fainted from excitement. I'm I'm not even kidding. I, I'm not. She's like she's like. She's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I, I'm so excited to see this movie, oh, oh. Well, and it was like, strange that I saw several girls with, like, hand-painted We Love Shia t-shirts. Really? Yeah. Really? Shia LaBeouf fangirls. Uh, that, that's a new one. Fangirls. I mean. That's a new one. <clears throat> I, really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 let me just blew your mind. Let me get let me get this out of the way right now. Have you ever gone to see a movie because there was well maybe that's a dumb question I'm pretty sure you have, but have you ever gone to see a movie because ex- it, precisely because there was someone in it? Probably yes. Nicholas Cage, an actor, but not because I had a. Crutch yeah, yeah, yeah. One. Okay, like because I, I I started realizing that was a stupid question before I've asked it because I've seen Nicolas Cage movies specifically because Nicolas Cage was in it, but that's not because I want to fuck Nicolas Cage. Well, maybe a little. No, no, but um, <laughs> no, um, but like I've never been like, this woman is so hot, I have to see this movie. Like that's never happened to me. What porn's for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just I just can't see a woman making a decision to go see a movie because there's a hot guy in it. I don't know. That's weird. I, I, that, that, that's and Shia LaBeouf really. That guy's a dweeb. I look better than Shia LaBeouf. I don't say that about many people. I look at this. Look, you see, look at that. I look better. Yeah, you look better. We're both two sexy guys. Can you say no 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 no? I can. I can, but I choose not to. You know why? Because I'm not a fucking pussy. I got unleashed there. So, let me, let me, here's, here's what happens in the movie. 
And I'm going to go through the movie step by step, and there's going to be spoilers. Not that there's really much to spoil. You know what happens. You know what happens in this flick. But, like, let me just get the, the audience reaction out of the way. Because at the end, at the beginning, applause. At the end, standing ovation. Wild applause. Wild applause. Wild. Huge. Huge. And many times during the movie, the crowd applauded crazily. And every time, well, there was one time they didn't, but but 19 times out of 20 they applaud in this movie. 20 is probably pushing it. 15. Let's go 15. 14 out of 15, it was because of Optimus Prime doing something awesome in slow motion. Pretty much. Pretty much. Now, and here's the thing. I concede... That every time Optimus Prime did something awesome in slow motion, it was indeed awesome. But people are going to walk out of this movie thinking that this is a good movie because there were awesome things that happened in it. You know what I mean? Like, there was a lot of awesome moments that took place in this movie. Really, like, sprinkled through this. But here's, here's what I think people don't get. is the fact that just because Optimus Prime is in this movie... That doesn't make it a good movie. You know, like, just because... Nah, uh, my, my friends are usually just in for a good time. We just go in just to see something on Tuesday nights, just to get out. Night. And after the movie was over, they were the, the exact thing they said was, this was a long-ass movie. Really? And I was like, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm going to say something that's going to stun you, Rigid. Fucking stun you. I don't know if it'll stun me now. If I had walked into this movie 90 minutes late, this was a fucking awesome movie. I yeah. Was, I was going to say, well, no, I was going to say, uh, I thought I was going to be alone on this when I was going to say that Dark of the Moon is probably my favorite no doubt it's it, if it i is. could classify that sort of thing if not making it on a scale of good to bad it's probably the one i would watch again yeah out yeah of all of them and yeah th this is the thing that was kind of that, that was kind of driving me nuts walking out of this it wasn't like an applause worthy movie but it was the best low low fucking bar low when the when the bar is set at worst movie ever Last time we were there. Yeah, Transformers 2, which I classified as one of, probably the worst movie I've ever seen. A feat which has not been replicated, by the way. I have still not seen a worse movie than Transformers 2. So you got nowhere to go but up. You got nowhere to go but up. So, by the way, when you make a clip of this, and I know some asshole's going to make a clip of me saying that, like it was saying it was an awesome movie. When you, when I'm saying that, I, I am severely quantifying that statement. Because, as I said, if I had missed... The first 90 minutes of this movie, the last act, really fucking good. Really well done. Should we outline maybe the good things first and then rip into No, it well, we, well, yeah, I mean, we're going to... We, I, I will acknowledge the good stuff. People, like, I, I seriously, I go into this movie with the worst fucking attitude possible. I admit this. I go into this movie basically nauseated at the people in the theater going to see it. Let me go back to let me go back to the Optimus Prime thing when I was talking about people. Seriously, I think I honestly think Michael Bay learned something from the second movie because that second movie, when the stuff people liked about that movie, Optimus Prime doing awesome shit. He was dead most of it. And he was dead most of it. But the good parts of that movie were Optimus Prime tearing shit up. The good stuff in this movie, Optimus Prime slow motion tearing shit up. He put a lot more of that in this movie. But. And here's again where I think people are walking out of this thinking this was a good movie. This was not a good movie. I think people are going to walk out of this and like, man, Optimus Prime really did a lot of stuff where he tore shit up. There's maybe three minutes of this movie where Optimus Prime is being awesome. Okay? Is that worth the 136 other minutes? How much? Yeah, about 136 minutes of bullshit you got to sit through to get there? No! No! God damn a thousand times no! The movie opens up with what I thought was well, a really good sequence 
where they were setting up the, uh, like, they kind of did a little revisionist history where they talk about there's an Autobot ship, their war for cyber, the war on Cybertron is going shitty. A skip is shaped from Cybertron with some kind of doomsday weapon, and it lands on the moon. So, like, Kennedy sent some fuckers up to the moon, and that's the Apollo, that's the, that's the, that's the moon landing mission. That's, and I was like, that was really well done. The, the way they integrated kind of stock footage, fakey stock footage, and, and kind of cinematography, and the way they kind of played it with a lot of import, and, you know, it wasn't full of fucking annoying characters. And you're kind of like, that's kind of cool, I dug it, it was okay. And then, <laughs> this is a, in a transition that was so abrupt and, I don't want to say obvious, obvious, but like, so childish, that even the audience there that was kind of in the bank for this movie, they just laughed. Like, laughed in derision, because the opening shot of this after the moon landing is that fucking blonde chick's ass. Full front. Full screen. Wide dude. screen. Dude, IMAX. I'm watching this IMAX shit. You see this. No, spectacular. Granted. But, like, you get fucking clinical with this blonde chick's ass. I think it was the the immediate message that Bay was going to give as to what this woman would be doing in this movie and what we should expect from her. Oh, totally. There, there is never any... There's never any ambiguity as to what this chick is in this movie for. Like, none. She's she's in this movie to wear hot clothes, as little, as few clothes as possible, and to fucking get out of cars looking sexy as shit. She does that well. Woo! Woo, but man. There's, like, there's never a moment that my, like, there's never, like, you know, like, when you see a really hot chick, she's got a fantastic rack... Like, most guys, me, anyway, me, I look subtle. It's like looking at the sun. You get one, gl- and you're like, you, like, you get one good glance, and you, look, you stare at her titties, and you're like, okay, gone. You, you get your look, you take your mental snapshot, and you're gone. Michael Bay, dude, no, he's just like... Can we get a wider lens? Dude, Michael Bay crawls up this chick's ass. Like, he is seriously, like... <laughs> He is, he is that male mind, he is that male mind without an ounce of shame, without that mental filter, the, like, without, like, it's like, you see that chick with the hot tits, and you get, well, look, I'll, you know, I look, I look, I look away, you know, I'm subtle about it, dude is just, like, pinned, uh, Jesus Christ, this guy, that, that's the dark of the moon right there, that's the, <laughs> shit, Yoo-hoo. Oh my God. Let me let me go to my notes here. <laughs> For oh shit, these guys. Okay, skid the mud flaps gone. We, we never hear, we never see or hear from skid and mud flap again. They are gone without comment, but they are replaced <laughs> with that Brooklyn accent robot from the second movie. And there's another robot with this kind of fiber optic, optic fucking hair. That sounds like, uh, I, 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 could, I, I always forget which one is which, Beavis or Butthead. But I think it sounds like Butthead. Where it's just, it's, it's just like, hey, 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 fucking hot, hot, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, like, it, it, it really is like fucking Beavis and Butthead, this fucking robot. I'm like, and they even say things like, you know, Shia's like, you get the fuck out of here, you get out of my house, you're fucking annoying. And the robot's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> We're we're fucking advanced uh, intelligence from ancient civilization. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're you're fucking you're an advanced fucking intelligence from an ancient fucking civilization, and you choose to talk like fucking butthead. This is one thing that I guess I will defend somewhat. Mm. In that, again, everything that was horrible in the second movie. Is made less horrible. In it this is. Movie. It's scaled back because there's no fucking robot scrotum. It's all reined back. So yes, while these two robots aren't good, they weren't skids and mud flaps. There's no fucking dog humping. That I mean, every example you can point to, it was lessened. You had uh, John Turturro, who's still an asshole in this movie, but you still didn't see his. Oh. 
butt There's cheeks. no fucking John Turturro stripping down to a fucking uh, jock strap. There, there were, there were more comic relief, but we didn't have what's his name from the second movie. The one oh, the nothing. Leo guy, Leo, who did oh. nothing but scream in that movie. It, oh, so it, you know, we still had all that, but it was diminished. But how, how fucking sad is that? That the, we're listing those as good things. <laughs> it didn't suck as bad. <laughs> the shit that made me want to peel my fucking eyes out of my goddamn head are not are lessened somewhat in this movie. I didn't have to see John Turturro's hairy fucking meteoric jiggly ass. Goddamn, that second movie sucked balls. God damn it, suck balls. You know what? Hang on a second. You keep talking. What what, what happened next? <laughs> uh, we're going into uh, Sam's life and how he's struggling in his horrible life of having a Victoria's Secret underwear model. Oh, I know. He's so tormented. He's he, having oh. an Ivy League education. Oh, God. I wish I had a, a, a complete free ride to an Ivy League college. I got a, I got a medal from a, President Obama. Has, got... has a ginormous New York apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he lives in D.C. Oh, I'm sorry. D.C., yeah. whatever. Even so, but it, it's like two stories. And it has, it, it's like, it is like a Michael Bay building. It's just got all these gigantic vaulted, vaunted well, ceilings. It, it and, has to be big enough so the Transformers can walk around upright in his apartment. And he's just having loads of just pure animal sex with this oh, underwear yeah. model. Oh, yeah. Life is hell. He's, a, he's like, he's, he's like, I just, I just... Don't feel like I'm a man. I, I don't feel like I matter. As he is fucking this sweet ass blonde chick. Like, oh my god, Shia, I feel your fucking pain. Oh, why? Life's a bitch. Oh, but he's like, I don't have a job. And people are like, there's like, everybody's getting him a job. There's like, fucking John Malkovich is like, you want a job? And it's like, I don't want to work in a mail room. Or like the fucking guy who's basically hitting on his girlfriend all the time. He's like, I can get you a job. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. But like, he's got a... He, shit. <laughs> he's just... He spends so much time bitching in this movie. We get montages. We get him moping. Yeah. Do we need all this? No. We get the fucking parents back. You know, for all I said about that good shit, about not having to see John Turturro... The fucking parents are back in this fucking movie. And they don't need to be in this fucking movie. These people are insufferable. Why did my computer reboot? I don't fucking know. But these, goddamn, they are so bad. The, the, the parents in this movie... They are so bad. Thankfully, they're only in it for like two minutes. No, 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 no. They come back like three or four times. It's only like three minutes total. Oh, it's horror show. I'm just fucking... I, I feel like pulling my fucking fingernails out and eating them. Like, they are such pain. Oh, pain. That, oh, that, that tired fucking shtick they do where, like, the wife... The, the mom is, like, talking about his dick and talking about sex around him and, like, jerking off and, like, like how do you keep getting these supermodel girlfriends? You must have an enormous schlong. Like, oh, my God! Oh. I would still take the parents over Dr. Ken. Oh, Dr. Ken. Oh, must. Oh, and of course... Of course. His name is, what is it? Wang. No, 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 no. Jimmy Wang? It's like J James Wang. He's like... But he calls himself Deep, Deep Wang. Deep Wang. Really? Really? This is this is the level of humor we get from Michael no, Bay. I, I, and you know, like... Oh, 
this is what he considers to be funny. Really, this is the kind of stuff that a fourth grader would consider immature humor. He writes. He writes a Chinese guy. Is he Chinese? I think he's Chinese. He writes. He writes an Asian guy. Let's just be generic. He writes an Asian guy named Jimmy Wang. Deep Wang. And he, like, just in case you don't get it, he says it like three times. He, like, as he's fucking straddling Shia LaBeouf in a men's bathroom stall, taking his pants off. Gay humor. Gay jokes. He starts, whis- he starts, like, whispering as he goes, he goes, Deep Wang. Deep Wang. Deep Wang. Oh my god. I get it. Wang is slang for fucking cock. And I know Michael Bay was like fucking chortling his ass off right in this. We're going to have an Asian guy named Wang. And I'm going to have his first name mean Wang too. Jimmy Wang. Wang Wang. His name is Deep Wang. You see it goes. Both ways. Hang on. I'm right. Optimus Prime. Fucking Malkovich. Let me list off the stars you got in this movie. You got... John Turturro. John Turturro. John Malkovich. Francis fucking McDormand. Hugo Weaving. Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard fucking Nimoy. You've got this amazing cast... You've got a Coen Brothers movie cast. <laughs> You've... And you use them to make this movie. I could be watching Miller's Crossing right now. I could be watching Fargo. Take your pick. Take your fucking pick. You get this unbelievable array of talent before you. And you're making a Ruby up, making a movie about fucking robots? Oh shit! Yep. This is why I spent my. This is why I spent my fucking weekend. Up. I spent my fucking weekend so far playing Final Fantasy X two, looking at footage for Final Fantasy X two, and then I take time out to go see Transformers: Bark at the Moon. I got no, no, no. I see. I got in the mail. I got the extended edition of Blu-rays of Lord of the Rings. Could be watching that. No. I got the fucking uh, Park Chan-wook Vengeance Trilogy. I could be watching that. Fucking old boy. One of my favorite fucking movies of all. No, no, no. But no, when I'm done with that, I got fucking Sucker Punch to watch. And then I got fucking Season of the Witch. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm really hating my job right now. Really, like, just, I, I know it's watching a fucking movie, but this is a god-awful fucking movie. To squander talent at this level. Leonard fucking Nimoy. You know what they do with Leonard fucking Nimoy in this movie? Not only do they take every me- moment they can to remind you that Leonard Nimoy is in this flick, prostituting himself! But you know what they do? They have him... The line? The line. Okay. You see, because Leonard Nimoy was Spock. Oh, the fucking line. And Spock had a line. Oh. And so Michael Bay had to remind you of the fact that Leonard Nimoy was Spock. And that Spock said a line. And the line was, The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Or the and one. I, I flip the screen, the double bird. Mm. I, I, you fucking raped the line. And see, the thing is, I was actually having my own little fan moment of having Leonard Nimoy, who is doing a good job as a voice actor. Oh. I liked him a lot. Then you had to put that in there. You had to fucking rape the Wrath of Khan right in front of me. You had, to, you had to mention one of the best sci-fi movies of all time. 
you got fucking Nimoy to say the line. Such that it has now lost all meaning. Deep Wang. Deep Wang. It would, Wrath of Khan just got Deep Wang. <laughs> Fuck, you just Deep Wang me. I felt Michael Bay's Deep Wang right in my ass watching this fucking movie. Right. Why did you say the line? Alan Tudyk. The guy from Firefly? Yeah. He plays like a gay Austrian hitman hacker? He plays a guy who wears floral print suits who's a former ninja? And a hacker? I, who the fuck is he? He works for John Turturro, but like, who the f- He's got this really weird skill set. Like, he's a butler. He's a hacker. He's a former fucking martial artist. Like, there should be a movie about this guy. Like, this guy has a way more interesting backstory than fucking Shia LaBeouf, man. I wrote... I have no idea who the Decepticons are. None. Like, even the ones I should know, like Starscream, I can barely identify as motherfuckers. There's so many anonymous Decepticons in this fucking movie. I don't know who they are. I should know who they are. Like, I, the, the Autobots, they do a better job of introducing the Autobots, but like... Even most of them are introduced in this movie, The Wreckers. I don't know their names. Uh, the only one I really know I have any ideas of are Bumblebee and Ironhide. Those are like the only ones I have any firm grasp of what they look like or what they do. Um, well, an Optimus Prime, but... I, I just... This is, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Like I said, the, the, the times that this movie is good is watching the, the Transformers and the Decepticons fight. And watching these characters... Watching these characters develop. And watching them, you know, when they die, it's tragic. And so, like, I don't give a shit about Shia LaBeouf. I don't give a shit about Francis McDormand's character. I don't give a shit about John Turturro. I don't give a shit about that fucking, uh, the Nest team. Or, or like, Tyrese or whatever his Epps, whatever his name is. There's so many kids. The parents... The, the girlfriend, John Malkovich, every fucking human character in this movie, I don't give a shit about. Nobody gives a shit about them. We want to see the Transformers fight. And I'm a broken fucking record about this shit. Because if you, if you handed me the script, the first thing I would do is tear out the pages with all the humans in them. This is a movie called Transformers, and the Transformers are secondary characters in their own fucking movie. When the whole war... When the whole war with Chicago is going on, are we following the Transformers? No. We're following Shia LaBeouf as he's rescuing his girlfriend, who I don't give a shit about. There's hundreds of thousands of people who are sitting around the fucking streets, charred fucking husks. You know, for kids. And, and like, I just don't care. How am I supposed to care about these kids? And that's the fundamental disconnect between Michael Bay and the Transformers movies is that he thinks we give a shit about the people. We don't give a shit about the people. We give a shit about the Transformers. And I barely know who the Transformers are. I have no fucking clue who the Decepticons are, because we never spend more than two minutes with the fucking Decepticons. Again, referencing to... Could you... Could you I couldn't identify a single one no, outside I, of uh, Megatron. No, I thought outside. Megatron died three times in that movie. Because everyone was just this anonymous gray blob sort they're, of thing. They're gray, they have guns, and their eyes glow red. That's it. There's, That's there's it. no other distinguishing features. At least in this one, I could at least tell different ones. There was the big worm thing that was Shockwave. There was still Megatron. There was still Scar Starscream. And there was the one non-gray one, which is Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sentinel Prime. 
So but, at least in that one, I was like, okay, that's the main bad guy. That's another bad guy. But still, you had a lot more of these anonymous gray. It's not really. I, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you that that there there were more that had identities in this one than any of the other ones. Like like of course he had Megatron, like, like the ones you named. They had identities, and when they were around, I could tell mostly who they were. But like, there's a, there's still a thousand fucking Decepticons that I'm like, who's Am I supposed to care? No. And this hacking through. My point is, is that the Decepticons, like Megatron, has maybe four lines in this movie. We see him in Africa, and he's like, "Star scream." Uh, have the humans gone to the moon and resurrected Sentinel Prime yet? And soon they will find they will bow to me, Megatron. And like that's the one line. That's his entire scene. And then, like, the rest, the entire rest of the movie, he just kind of sits there and sulks. It's like if in Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader only had, like, two scenes. And it, that's what, it, it's what I mean is, it's just weird how the villain of the movie, he's barely in it. Like, there, there's a plot hole, by the way, in this one, where she's looking through the binoculars and she sees uh, Sentinel and Megatron arguing. And she's, she's like, gets an idea, and she's like, I can use it. Like, you can see that he has, like, Megatron is not, never plays second banana anybody. And and she's like, I can use it. How does she hear that? I don't know how you could tell that she was forming a thought in that. I can see, uh, you can see it, because she's looking through and, and kind of, like, she Sentinel's... only has, like, one acting range, and that's, she's got these puffy lips that, that she's got, like, fish-lipped, and she just has doe-eyed. So everything was just, like... <laughs> no, it wasn't. I actually thought she was better than Megan Fox. She was better than Megan Fox. That's what I mean. But she like, still, she had one, and that was one more than Megan. <laughs> she actually did manage to look kind of concerned. No, 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 no. Like, uh, kind of um, in a state of shock. Like, there's actually well, like they, they hold this shot forever. There's like a twenty second shot of like. The, the Autobots and the Decepticons are fighting, and she's kind of standing out in the open like a dumbass. And she's kind of like... <laughs> and they hold that... Sh- no, she- <laughs> Stop it. You're a pig. <laughs> I abhor you. I lost my... Oh, the... the ki- but my point is, going back to the... Like, I just don't know how you can have this movie with the Transformers and not give the villains basically any time. You know, like... you. Like, I can identify Megatron, but if I hadn't seen the last two movies, I wouldn't know shit about Megatron. If I hadn't seen the last two movies, I wouldn't know shit about Starscream. Um, like, and, and fucking, none of them have any characters. Like, uh, Sh- uh, Shockwave? No character. Did he say a fucking word? The one, what, the Razorbeak? He, that, that character says more lines. I don't know what, what the fuck happened to Razorbeak. Like, but th- th- that's my thing, is like, in a movie called Transformers, I know virtually nothing about the Transformers. I know virtually nothing about any of the Decepticons. And these are the so, these are supposed to be the central characters of the fucking movie. And they're not. And every time we're reminded that this, this movie revol- revolves entirely around the human characters, and it shouldn't for any reason. Because it just, it just, it just doesn't. Because everything has to do with Cybertron. They're trying to bring Cybertron through a portal. And the humans are like, this is our planet. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Hang on. What else? P. Oh, you remember that one scene with... I have no idea who this Transformer was. But, like, two of the Decepticons and two of the Autobots are pointing guns at each other. And one of them goes, looks like we got ourselves a Mexican standoff. How does a robot from Cybertron know what the fuck a Mexican standoff is? But then they decide to play by Hitman rules. Yeah. Um, this is where... Oh, this is where I start taking notes about how... I, I actually got really offended watching this movie. Um, when I started to realize that there's a lot of shit in this film that's... Okay. When, when the invasion starts, Megatron goes down and he smashes up the Lincoln Memorial and he sits in it like a throne. And the people around me were like, Ooh, what's he doing? You know, 
this this isn't evocative. You know, this isn't. You're not making me feel anything with this with this imagery. You know, you got a guy. Of course, he's a bad guy. He smashed up Abe Lincoln. We're messing with America. He's messing with America, my God. You know, it's not evocative. It's just exploitative. And that's not even that's not even on the on the radar of the exploitative shit that goes on in this movie. Can you name the exploitative stuff that goes on in this flick? I'll help you. We evoke imagery of the Challenger explosion. We repeatedly evoke imagery of 9-11. With ships crashing into buildings, buildings falling down, referring to the area as Ground Zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any other disasters you want to exploit for us, Michael, to make us feel something about your fucking uh, robot war? Because uh, I'm pretty disgusted. It's pretty shameless, dude. Like, and I'm not. Like, and I'm not saying that you can never show a fucking robot war movie ever again. I'm not saying you can't ever show a city getting crushed by robots ever again. I'm not going to raise the specter of 9/11 every time that happens. But here, he's fucking doing it. The Challenger explosion one was particularly uh, disgusting when the when the Autobot shuttle gets shot down and we're all watching on TV going like, oh, oh yeah, I remember that too. And you can't tell me that's not happening because he's he's he uses he exploits other historical uh, disasters for his own for his own ends. Um, Chernobyl that tied in with the Autobots too. Why not? Chernobyl, that uh, the thousand people who died, the horrible global uh, ecological disaster that happened there. Yeah, it's for my movie. Jesus Christ. Oh, the girlfriend gets held hostage by sound wave in a tentacle hentai machine. I love that one. Oh. And I wrote this because I was really getting annoyed with the human characters. I, I wrote down annoying fucks in big capital letters. <laughs> um... There's a scene where uh, things are going bad, and so, like, the Decepticons get on the radio, and they're like, look, this is the Decepticons. All we want to do is harvest your planet for some resources, and we'll go. The only thing we want is for you to send those fucking Autobots off the planet, too, and we'll leave. And immediately, immediately and repeatedly, we've shown the humans to be completely cowardly fucks who immediately cave to their demands and exile the Autobots because they're scared pissless that the Decepticons are going to kill them. No, it's because we can trust things that are called Decepticons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, they immediately take the Decepticons at their word. It's that, not that they're afraid. It's, how dare you Autobots bring this to us? Oh. The, the Decepticons... All they want are a few things. That you leave them yeah, alone. Yeah, you brought them you, here. You brought them you here. You brought to us. your war here. <laughs> you brought your war here, Optimus Prime. You son of a bitch. And, and they're the, gonna side with those trustworthy Decepticons. And then, and then they, they they exile the Autobots and they blow the shuttle up and they look. They, they're so so. Francis McDormand is so heartbroken looking at the camera. She's like, the Decepticons lied. <laughs> Oh, they're just, they seem so trustworthy. They call themselves Decepticons, you stupid cunt! I'll go off on a tirade. Go! Uh, if it's one thing that Michael Bay still hasn't learned yet, it's the difference between comic relief and killing any mood in your film. And one scene that, you know, it... It's what it is. It relieves tension. But, like, one scene I'm picking out of the numerous ones is take the scene where the Decepticons get uh, Shia's girlfriend and they're holding her hostage and they say, either you're going to be a, a, a spy for us mm -hmm. and tell us what Optimus is doing or we're going to kill your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And it's this really tense and... 
and struggling scene where where he's really trying to struggle with what he should do. Oh, that should, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should he should he turn his back on Optimus Prime or should he, he do something about his girlfriend? Ah, and it's so so, it's yeah. so intense. And then the, the the moment afterward, the direct scene afterward, he goes to the base. He goes to the base and he's doing pratfalls. Yeah, yeah. The, and the, he's he's he, touching he, people's he, hair. Hang on, hang on. The watch, the the the, the Decepticons. Are, want to find out what the Autobots are really up to. So they they put this fucking wristwatch on them, and they're like, this wristwatch will tap into your nervous system. And it'll see, we'll see what you see. We'll hear what you hear. And if you fuck around, this thing will fucking electrocute you, and it can control your movements, and we'll fucking kill you. And so Shia's like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta betray Optimus. I gotta betray, like, my closest Autobot friend. And he's like, oh my god. Oh my god, what do I do? Next scene, go on. He's, he goes to the base and this watch is controlling him and it's flipping him over desks. He's doing pratfalls. He's moving over people. He's massaging people's hair. And yeah, he's, he's like... Mm-hmm. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, nothing. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow. You completely killed any emotion that we had for any of these characters. Like, no longer are we concerned about Sam struggle. What is he gonna do? Because he's a fucking clown, and he's here to do little cartwheels for you. Yeah, I mean, and that's just one example of the many times. It's like you can have your funny characters. I don't mind if you have your little, oh, little, do. little bitty, little bitty Autobots that want to roll in and do their little shtick at every. It's called a while. consistent tone. But yes, you you can't immediately do a one eighty turn. And turn what what should be heart wrenching into rolling on the floor laughing. It yeah it it, that, it gets better as the movie goes on, but he really wants to have it both ways. Where th- th- this is where you know f- actually from the beginning, like in every movie, this is probably the the hardest part to reconcile. The comedy is intolerable. Just, just incredibly scalp peelingly painful. But I can appreciate that there's people who enjoy that kind of comedy. Okay, like you know, there's people who will go see the fucking the the gross out humor and the gay humor and the deep wang. And, okay, fine, I can appreciate the need for that. There's a need for slapstick in movies, but. There's such a tonal inconsistency with that and the really somber, really, uh, you can tell he really wants to tell like an emotional tale sometimes with the, the fucking Autobot War. Especially when Chicago is getting flattened. They really try to pull on the heartstrings for that one with all the charred bodies in the streets and and the the Autobots who are dying and the people you see who are getting executed, you know, the, the, the Autobots are getting, like, fucking murdered execution style. And we're like, oh, my God, this is really intense. And then the fucking little RC cars come out and they do their slapstick shit. We're like, I, I don't even think it's, like, ten seconds after we see one Autobot get executed that we see the other ones are like, oh, man, we are so lost. <laughs> yeah, we're lost, we're lost. And, like, and they kind of do that. I'm like, dude! It's like going from a gang rape to a pie-in-the-face type humor. And th- they do that all the time. Is th- They go from a war scene to Goofy. Goofy, go- it, 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 there, there's, I guess there's a time for that, but that time is very limited, you know? It, 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 it's really jarring. It, it, it basically hurts to, to, to switch tones like that. And... They've been doing that every single time, every single movie, and it's really hard to get into a film when when you're being jerked around like that. Lots of shots of uh, you know that, that that Michael loves the U.S. military because he fucking has sex with them with this camera, deep wing. Like no, like like when Chicago's getting butt fucked, they're like the military's like we gotta roll out and crack some steel, and so of course like. No matter where we are or what time it is, we see the fucking military mobilizing in front of a sunrise. And seriously, go watch like the first half of this movie when the military starts rolling out. They, they it's always in front of a sunrise. 
No matter where they are, people get out, you know you know how we used to do that in the Rock and shit like that. When people get out of fucking cars, it's always it's always a low angle shot in front of the sunrise. There's tattered flags and there's plenty of jets and shit. Yeah. Honest to God, I'm surprised they didn't do a. I'm, they didn't try to do some kind of Iwo Jima symbolism with like raising the American flag on the records or some shit. They kind of did with that tattered flag at the end. It was. Um. The crashing build, well, the probably the biggest scene in this movie is the crashing building scene where they're all sliding down and they're sliding in the movie, they're sliding in the building and they're grabbing on the live wires and the the big thing, the big worm is ha- fucking the tower and stuff like that. Entirely pointless. Well, again, it was cool looking, but oh, by the way, Michael, I saw Inception too. That was a really fun movie. Um, <laughs> but again, when we're talking about a two-hour and forty-minute movie. When you have something that is completely pointless, that nothing, nothing was advanced in any way. It's just our characters go in this building. Ah, worm well, they, is going around it. They, they set up why they wanted to go in the building. They're like, we have to shoot the teleportation pillar, so we got a rocket launcher and we have to get in this building to do it. So they go in the building, they start lining up the shot, and... The worm butt fucks the building and it starts falling down, and then they just forget about that, <laughs> and then it's just over. It's just and over. Nothing, yeah. nothing's changed. Like, do do something, advance something. Yeah, like, that that entire seriously that entire scene you could have pulled out and not missed a single thing. No, I mean not, right. not a thing. And that and again, that's that's the extraneous nature of the human characters in this movie. You know, it's cool. I mean, yeah, it's an action scene, and it's it's it was the one part that you that I looked at in the trailer is like, oh, that's awesome. And, you know, the snake going around the building. So I, you know, I don't want to bash an action scene, but it was entirely completely pointless. The scene where the military guys jump out of the the helicopters, dying by the thousands. By the way, they jump out of the helicopters in those little parachute suits. It was cool, but did it need to be in this movie? Did it serve any purpose? Like, no, really. The only thing that they needed to do was get the soldiers into the city. By the way, I like, uh, I love the the way the the movie just kind of glosses over what should be important shit. Like, take the scene where the building is falling down, mm-hmm. and everyone is like falling around. They're like pinballs crashing against pillars and shit. And then we cut away, and then we come back in the next scene, and all the characters are just running along the street. You're like, how did they get down? They're all falling down this building. The, the building was crashing down, and, and all of a sudden they're just running, and it's all fine. The scene's over. Action scene's over. Action scene's over. And then they have this problem that they need to get the bridge down. They need to, to get across the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And they do that, and then they run over, and the military's waiting for them. Oh, that was that was that, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, yeah. The military needs to get into the city, and they yeah, need right. to lower the bridge. Right. And it's so important. And then they lower the bridge, and they run over, and immediately run into a bunch of army guys. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that this is again what I'm saying about the, the the scenes being entirely pointless. They have this whole scene there. They they set up this scene for 15 minutes, where they're like, "We have to get in the city somehow." Well, we gotta we gotta wing suit in. They call it, and so like. Okay, they're like, oh, we gotta mobilize the shit. And so they start mobilizing the shit in front of the sunrises. And of course, the guy has to give a, a badass speech. The Michael Bay, any man doesn't wanna, any man doesn't wanna, I can't promise you're gonna get out of here. Any man doesn't wanna do this, you can step out now, no shame. And of course, they're all like, they attacked America. Of course, we're gonna go. And so, the, like, really, you could write this scene in your sleep. So they all step forward, they all get in the fucking helicopters, they all get fucking shot down, they all jump out of the fucking helicopters. Huge scene. Where we're following them, they're flying through, it's a video game sequence. You know, where they're, they're flying around, the Decepticons are chasing them, and they're flying through the buildings, and they're getting shot at, and they finally land, and then they're like, wow, that was a really fucking harrowing scene. It's a good thing we got in the city. Oh shit, we gotta cross that bridge. So they cross the bridge, and immediately they run into a bunch of scuba divers who are coming out of the river. And I'm like, shit! <laughs> we could have scuba in here! 
Damn it! He <laughs> didn't need to do that dangerous hang gliding shit. We so didn't need to parachute. It was cool, though. Because how fucking boring would that have been if they'd have been like, we need to get in the city. What if we took a sub? Goddamn like, Navy SEALs. What if we what if we scuba scoop it in there, a snorkel? Like, that's not exciting. That's not jumping out of anything. That's just swimming. Fuck that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I really didn't laugh out loud. They cut, like, they went through all this shit. They lost, like, how many people died in that scene? They must have killed, like... Dozens. No, 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 no. Like, 12 helicopters? Oh, about? Yeah. About 12 helicopters, so we're talking like each one had, let's say, 16 people and two pilots, so 18 people times 12. That's a lot. That's that's like 200-some 200, 200 people. So they, they all died to get those eight fuckers, eight to, eight to 12 fuckers, to parachute in the city. And then people are already waiting for them. And there's people waiting for them. The fuckers in the scuba gear are just like, hey, guy. And they, like, they, don't, they don't tell them to do anything. They're like, they, they, they get in there and like, okay. Those Autobots have been captured, so why don't you go hide in that building and do nothing? And then they run off. And like, <laughs> um, I also like the really pointless scene where the the mad scientist Autobot introduces the weapons. Oh, like just completely pull out of your ass. Yeah, it just right out of his ass. You know, he, he no, he, like a little a little Autobot compartment opens up in his ass, and he pulls them out of his ass, and he's like, he's like, Sam, take these. It's a climbing claw and a and a bomb. It's like Michael Bay knew these human characters were worthless. Yeah. So he's like, what can I do? God damn. Yeah. Oh, they have little bombs. Well, because we've repeatedly established that human weaponry does nothing to the Autobots. And so they're like, well, shit, we need to have the... Uh... We need to have the U.S. military be somewhat effective because I have a huge fucking erection for the U.S. military. So they have to fight back. We have to show the power of unity. We have to show the power of the U.S. military, the greatest fucking fighting force on the face of the planet. But I've already established that their guns suck. I know. Let's have the fucking mad scientist character give them basically dynamite. Like Autobot dynamite made with Energon or something like that. So they, that's it. They, they set the fuse. They impale the fucking Decepticon with the dynamite and it blows up and they die. Because they, they wanted to have the scene where, where Shia fights a Decepticon and blows it up. He's not completely worthless. Yeah. We have, to, we have to justify his fucking existence at some point in this goddamn movie, right? So, yeah. The, and that scene takes, really, that entire scene, eight seconds. They're like, Sam, take this. It's a climbing claw and a stick of dynamite. 30 second fuse, go. And they're like, it's over. That scene is done. We've established we have these weapons. They're like, Sam doesn't ask, like... You, you made human-sized weaponry? You, you made human-sized bionic commando gloves? Like, I would have questions about this. Why not like, make a bazooka yeah. for us? Why not make a fucking rifle that can kill Decepticons? Or, like, why not... You, you, made, it, you made it climbing glove. <laughs> and, of course... The, of course, during this harrowing scene... Again, t tonal, tonal inconsistency here. Is it, is it, is it Starscream that attacks him? With the... I don't know who that. Was. I don't know who that was. I thought it was just generic Decepticon. There, there's this, there's this Decepticon that's talking shit. He's like, "Oh, I love watching you humans run on your little insect legs and things like that." I think that was Starscream, but again, I don't know. You know, color coding, make Starscream blue. Would that have killed you? Or, like, have somebody... You know what? It, even a line where Shia, like, gets attacked and he goes, Starscream! Or something like... That would have really helped me out. Because I don't know who's fighting, I don't know who's dying, and I don't know if I should care. It really is hard. But, during that whole scene... I think it's Starscream. I don't know. During that whole scene, which should be really exciting, really... Uh, really dangerous i'm like oh no is sam gonna die actually i'm thinking oh my god sam could die no um i'm not even thinking that but like during this whole scene where i'm like he's gonna fight he's gonna fight this decepticon he's gonna use his his energon dynamite and blow him up of course he whips out the climbing glove he gets the he gets the hook stuck in his eye and he spends the next three minutes swinging around like a fucking yo-yo bouncing bouncing off walls Slaps like 
Fucking Starscream is being all slapsticky and shit, going, "Oh my fucking eye! Oh my fucking eye!" And like Shia LaBeouf is all swinging around, uh, uh, and of course the whole time he's screaming like a woman. Ah! You think I'm kidding? No. No. Like several times during the course of this series, Shia LaBeouf basically screams like a woman in a 1950s comedy. You know the kind of scream a woman gets in those comedies where she sees a rat and jumps up on a table, hands up to her face, going, she, He does this. Many times. So, like, he's doing this fucking brutal, nut-crunching woman scream as he's flying all over the place with his fucking bionic commando claw. That fucking marine, that the Josh Duhamel guy... He's hanging on to his legs, and he's getting thrown around, and he's going like, "Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go!" Oh, reel it, reel it, reel it! No, 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 no! Oh my god! And so, like, two, three minutes pass in this fashion, no fucking dignity for anyone involved. What should be a really exciting, memorable, tense scene where I'm worried about these characters dying is an extended slapstick sequence. It kills me. It really kills the movie. Now, I'm shitting all over this flick. And, again, I do have to admit, the last hour or so is okay. For as totally inconsistent as it is, for as little as I care about the human characters, it's well shot. It is pretty exciting for the most part. I could tell what was going on. The I could, yeah, sequence. yeah. And that was the biggest thing, really, was uh, when, I'm, when I'm watching the, the action sequences, I, it, it, he pulled enough far back and the edits weren't so fast that I could see. In the first two s- movies, I couldn't tell what was going on. Who was fighting who and who was doing what. I still couldn't tell who was fighting who. But, but in this one, it, it, he did pull it back enough that you could tell... And when you got to the cool moments of Optimus Prime, he slowed things down so you can see what was going on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I do have to admit, the, the, the final action sequences were really effective. And again, and I have to compliment it where it's good. Like when you had Optimus Prime and Sentinel Prime and Megatron duking it out, actually exchanging dialogue... I felt like there was character development. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt like these characters had a history. I felt like they had a past. I felt like they had motivations. And I felt a sense of loss of some variety when there was a possibility of them dying. And that was all I was asking for from the beginning of this shit. It's really a mistaken series of priorities. Because when it worked, which wasn't often, but when it worked in scenes like the final showdown with Sentinel and Optimus and Megatron, it worked really well. But three minutes out of two hours and 40 minutes, you know. Um, it's, it's just a real, a real case of horrible priorities. Imagine if they'd made a whole movie like that. Imagine if they'd made a whole movie out of the Autobots and the Decepticons where you got to know the Autobots, you got to know the Decepticons, and you got to watch them develop as characters, develop histories, fight it out. And I'm not talking like... I'm not just talking like shut your brain off entertainment. That would have been good too. Because in terms of shut your brain off entertainment, the last act was pretty good. But it just... There's, there's potential for story here. There's potential for characters here. And what do we spend that time on? We spend it on John Turturro, Shia LaBeouf, and fucking John Malkovich, who is entirely fucking wasted, who has somehow taken a step down from fucking Aragon. I, I, re- I really had a loss for words to explain the, the priorities here. I, I, I really can. Deep Wang. Deep Wang. That's where his priorities are. Deep Wang. Can you imagine how good this movie would have been if 
without the comic, seriously, without a single page, without a single line of comic relief. Which would have excised basically every human character. And how many times have I come in front of this camera and said that? Three? <laughs> Three. I, 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 don't, I don't know. So I, don't, I, I really don't know what to tell you guys at the end of this. Like, do I recommend this movie? No. I don't. Uh, what, what, would I recommend this movie if you showed up an hour and a half late? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the, it sucks. It, it doesn't suck as bad as the other two. My God. What movie can't you say that about? This and, is the most entertaining of them all. It has, it has the best action. It has the best framed action. It has the least least annoying characters it has the most formed plot it actually <laughs> it doesn't have the plot holes it has plot holes but it doesn't oh. have the crippling like completely broken plot holes of the of the the first two so i mean it it's bad <sighs> If you if you even somewhat liked the first two for some reason, then you will like this one. Oh my god! It's just, it's. I really don't know who goes to see this movie. Like, I, I even on Twitter I got called a hypocrite. I was like, how many fucking people are in this movie? They're like, you're there. I'm going as a critic. I'm going because you like to see me bitch about it. Those people are going there because they think this is a good movie, and it's not. I, just, I, I was really cheering for the Decepticons at some point because the human characters are so fucking stupid the human race deserves to be enslaved and subjugated. Uh, I write... I, I, I cast you out. You who, you who enjoy this movie, I release you. I have no use for you. Last words. <laughs> this is the same book I uh, I wrote Yahoo Serious in. Well, you seem I've, like... I've now been up 24 hours, yeah. and this three-hour three, three hour movie didn't help. Yeah, you actually seemed... To, I actually thought you hated this movie more than I did, because the first thing you said when you came in was, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even make that noise. <laughs> it really didn't help I was up all day. I know. I know. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin's in this movie, too. And he wasn't the worst actor. <laughs> he just kind of said, It's a great honor to see you, Optimus Prime. And that was it. It was. It, Alan it, Tudyk is in this movie. It was it was just long. That's the, the the biggest complaint I have about this. This this was the complaint that every one of my friends had about it. It was long. It's a long sit. You know what? Fucking, fucking Lord of the Rings. Hang on. I know I'm dragging the review up, but I gotta know. How long is this? Um, I can't tell. How long is this thing? Two uh, 228 minutes. Wow, that is fucking long. 228 minutes? That can't be that. That can't be right. For the movie? Or are they talking total running time? That's three... That's almost four hours. Jesus Christ. Is it really that long? Wow. Doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel that long. It feels long, but it doesn't feel... F Wow. 228 minutes. No shit. Hang on. Two towers. 235. That one's longer. Return of the King's gotta be fucking long. 263. It's like 4 hours and 15 minutes. Jesus Christ. Wow. I was about to make a point that fucking Lord of the Rings didn't have to be told in that much time, but apparently it does. That actually had enough story that needed to be told over that much amount of time. Let, 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 I, I'll still make that point. You know what? I'll still make that point. 
Lord of the Rings took three hours and change to tell. Lord of the Rings. Fucking Transformers? Two hours and 40 minutes. Fuck you. Really? Really? Two hours? Really? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Three full-size novels in the three, three and a half hour movies. Really? Transformers, it doesn't have the same plot. I could have cut, well, I, I keep, I, I could have cut about half that movie out, but I really could have. I would have started at the invasion of Chicago. By the way, that, when, when it was revealed what the, the Decepticons plan was, they're like, um, they're talking like, they, they got the, they got the pillars, the teleportation pillars, and they're talking like, the, 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 the douchey, the douchey guy who's working as a double agent for the Decepticons, he's like, you don't understand anything, do you? What the Decepticons' plan is? And they're like, I think she's like, what possible resource could the Decepticons want on Earth to rebuild Cybertron? And he's like, what do you think? The only thing Earth has that no other place does. And she's like, humans? He's like, about eight billion of them. And she's like, but there's no way you could get eight billion humans over to Cybertron. And he's all, that's why they're bringing Cybertron here. The people around me went, Oh, I figured that shit out immediately. I, I didn't know they were literally going to beam Cybertron, like, right next to Earth. But what I thought they were planning was to, like, cover the Earth in satellites and then, like, replace Earth with Cybertron. You know what I mean? Like, like, repla like terraform it. With Cybertron. I didn't know they were actually going to, like, crash Earth into Cybertron. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. By the way, they totally buttfuck Cybertron in this movie. They deep wang that shit. Like, <laughs> like when, the, when the teleportation thing fucks up and there's, like, this big vortex. Deep wang, man. Like, you'd, you'd think fucking Optimus Prime would be like, oh, shit. Oh, we just fucked up Cybertron bad. Oh, God. We're damn. Oh, damn. Um, I guess we're staying on Earth. By the way... I bet things are a little awkward now between the Autobots on Earth and the U.S. government. A little bit. A little bit. After we fucking deported them. You think you think Optimus Prime is going to lord that over their heads for a little while? Like, uh, by the way, but the Autobots totally bend over for the U.S. government. They basically fight the war in Iraq and Afghanistan for the U.S. government. I'm sorry, when did the Autobots become our bitch? Yeah. That's why I started rooting for the Decepticons. Because at least the Decepticons didn't bitch themselves out to the U.S. government. There's a difference between being allied with humanity and then going to fight in Afghanistan for us. Now, I'm not saying that Autobots wouldn't care about stopping international terrorism. I'm not saying that. But it basically makes the point that they're going and fighting our wars for us. Like, we're sending Optimus Prime to go hunt intelligence targets in fucking Libya and shit, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, that kind of goes into a really weird area where, honestly, you wonder why the Decepticons don't ally with the forces of terrorism, and then you got a very different movie, a, it actually might be a little interesting, but you got a very different movie, where fucking Megatron is allied with Osama Bin Laden, which actually would have been kind of a cool shot, <laughs> All hail Megatron! And Osama Bin Laden's like, Praise be to Allah! And Megatron's like, What the fuck did you say? He's like, Praise be to Allah! Fuck you! Hail Megatron! Because <laughs> <laughs> Megatron don't play backseat bitch to nobody. Alright? Yeah. Anyway. My closing statement is... Why could this movie not be about Transformers? That's it. Like, those are the characters that are interesting. Those are the characters that people applauded for. Like, every time those characters applauded, the people in the audience applauded, it was for the Autobots. Why then are we wasting our fucking time with Shia LaBeouf? Like, I just... Fucked up priorities, man. Fucked up. Why couldn't this be at most two hours? Because we most. had... Because we had to have the fucking subplots with the Nest team and the, the Shia LaBeouf's parents and his girlfriend and the romance... By the way, totally didn't buy that romance at all. Like, the fact that he's all he's all going around going, she's the one, she's the one. Like, first off, we didn't see them meet. 
Actually, I guess we did. They were in the White House when Obama's giving him his medal. But Jesus, I believe in intergalactic transforming robots more than I do with that romance. This movie sucked. Okay, it was better than the other two. Take that for what it's worth. This movie hurts. Now I gotta go watch fucking Sucker Punch. Which I was very fortunate enough to see in the fucking theater, by the way. Okay. I'm turning this off. See what you've done to me? Wang is symbol for penis. Deep Wang. There's fucking Deep Wang in this movie. 